But if you read your Bible well, anyone, anyone who has ever made a difference did it in spite of the fearful circumstances around them. Courage in the face of fear is what is known as fearlessness. The Bible is a David and Goliath book. The Bible is a David and Goliath book. It teaches you that with God on your side you are bigger than your problems so you can be fearless because the Bible is a David and Goliath book living the fearless life requires something it requires you live in what you call the faith arena, the faith zone. It means holding on to something, grabbing hold of nothing, and holding on to it until it becomes something. When you move into that faith zone, and when you choose to live the fearless life, you will now discover where God lives. The Bible says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. It means that no matter how religious you are, no matter how active you are in church, if you are not relying on faith, you are not pleasing God. No matter your name, no matter your activity in church, say, but without faith, it's impossible to please you. When you get to the arena of fearlessness and the arena of faith, then you discover who God really is. Men who move in the miraculous. There are people in whose life fear was gone. There are people who operate on that faith level. This is a very, very serious matter. The faith zone is is where the miracles happen. The faith zone is where the miracles happen. Happen. And as long as you stay in your comfort zone, you will not grow. As far as you stay in that zone of fear, you will not move forward. They prophesy on Paul. This place you are going, don't go. If you go, they are going to tie you down. They are going to chain you down. He said, I am going there. Not knowing what will befall me. He said, but I will go anyway. He could not be bothered whether he lived or he died. He was walking the situation blind. That's what to call living by faith. That is a fearless life. Those are the people we are reading about today. Many of us are so much afraid. Afraid of this, afraid of that, afraid of all kinds of things. There can be no progress in life without taking some risks. We cannot succeed in life if we are living a life of fear. Somebody did some research to know what human beings fear most. 
he made the list of top 10 things that men fear most the top 10 worst human fears the number one that was on his list was fear of failure fear that people will say ah you failed fear that people will say ah you didn't succeed and it's a strange thing the bottom line is this as far as you live a life of fear your enemies will be rejoicing because they can see that you are afraid psychologists they have identified over 2,000 fears of human beings which they call phobia they call them phobia phobia, phobia but the truth but scientifically that human beings are born with only two fears only two fears number one fear of loud noises and fear of falling and researchers have said that well the fear of loud noise and the fear of falling must have originated from the womb. Because the baby, when the baby is born, the baby cannot walk by itself. The baby cannot do much thing by itself. So the baby is always afraid of falling. Fear of loud noises. The womb is a very quiet place for the baby. Those are the two fears that they say we are born with. Meaning that all other fears were learned and acquired when we became adults. Fearlessness. It's not the absence of fear. It is to master fear. The mastery of fear. You master it. Fear is not a natural force. To a born again child of God. It was natural to you before you got born again. But now that your spirit man is born again and is recreated, fear should not have a place in your life. Fear is a spiritual force. Just as faith is a spiritual force. Fear activates Satan. Just the way faith activates God. Fear is totally destructive. Fear is a satanic force that wants to work against your divine opportunities. The promise that God has made to us Satan uses fear to challenge it. He likes to make it look as if those promises will never work for you in particular. And so when you don't trust those promises of God, heavens get so disappointed. Those two people that went to the land of Canaan and came back to Moses. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. They said, Sir, we saw giants there. But those giants, they are meat for us. Those, those two people were not afraid. The other ten were scared. They said, Ah, that land is not good. It's a land that heated the inhabitants. They are the sons of Anak giants there. Are the kind of human beings we saw there. We were like grasshoppers when we saw them. God was very angry. Said, okay. I'm the one taking you to the land. I'm the one who will take care of the giants. But now, since you have confessed that you are grasshoppers, so that grasshopper you will become a grasshopper. And God dealt with them 
because the battle is the Lord and they did not commit the battle to God can you turn to somebody except my friend the battle you are facing has no future can you say it loud and clear to your friend shout it at your friend when we say something has no future it means you cannot make any progress you can, you be, can be destroyed at any time it can evaporate at any time faith is released by speaking things as though they were fear is also released the same way by speaking words of faith fear will depart fear of failure is something we should not tolerate at all this man called Napoleon Napoleon was 42 was in 42 position in his class of 43 but this same Napoleon Napoleon led his army successfully to conquer the world. Like somebody called Albert Einstein. Some people call him the father of atomic energy. He was considered a dunce. And they told him to change his course from physics that he was studying. Today, if you are listing the geniuses that have been born in our world, you have to mention his name. This is a strange thing. That somebody claims that God is his father but is afraid of his future. When the Bible says the heaven is the Lord and the fullness thereof. When babies start to walk, they begin by eating every piece of furniture in the house. They fall and get up. They fall and get up. But they have mastered how to walk. Life is like this. You must keep getting up. Every time you fall. If you can stay free from the spirit of fear, nothing can defeat you. Because your fearlessness is perdition to the enemy. That's why one of this one of the songs that we sing in church in those days we don't sing it much now but it's still a, still a powerful song it says, what a mighty God we serve heaven and even Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. What a mighty God! What a Hallelujah, what a mighty God! We sang. Hallelujah. Everlast adore, angels bow before you. What a mighty God we
rise to your feet, beloved. It is not in vain that the Bible says with man. This is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. A woman was watching Paramount Changers in Italy online. It was water. It was, it was water or fire program. When we began to pray on the water, she now remembered she had a sister in an American hospital that was being destroyed by cancer. She called, she called the woman and said. You are in the hospital. Only you are in the Say yes. The doctors have given up here. Only Ben. I want doctor to report it. Jam on our own body. Put on your laptop. Oh yeah. Be royal. Go to the special place. We lost the baby. Baby, Lord, you are the program now. We want to wait. It is called water fire. Walk by. Need to be no. Tell them to get you water. So from what come? What we from? That hospital where you are. Nile was not to worry. So they got this woman put on the laptop. They've already moved out to where they expect her to die. And so she got water. This was her first time of even knowing that the such a program is online. So we began to pray on the water. She had to held a bottle of water there. She drank that water. After drinking that water, she said it's as if an electric current moved through her body. And instantly, she could walk. She could do what she could not do. And within three days, the person they said would die. And it was okay. was discharged. I have the testimony in writing. It's with me. One of these days allows them to read it. I have it in writing. Because we serve a God who makes impossibility possible. Impossibility possible. Five hundred candidates were selected from over the world to fill just twelve positions. And there was a lady that was at one of her programs. And she keyed on to a word of knowledge there. That the Lord is about to propose somebody beyond his wildest dreams. And they went to this place. And each person came out. Said they were, what they were going to do. This what they were going to do. They were supposed to vote for them. She said by the time those people were saying, were mentioning their credentials, what they could do, what they could do, she was already afraid. But all of a sudden, some is the child of God. Why are you afraid? Keep on to the word you have received. And she keep on to the word she has received. When it was her turn to speak, she said, well, if you put me in this position, I will do what God empowers me to do. No, no, she said, they say, I'm this, I'm that, I did this, oh, I did sorry. that. No. By the time the voting will start, she was one of the twelve. Out of 500. Your fearlessness is a token of the partition of your enemy. But once you start getting afraid, you give them the key. You give them what? The key. The year we started there, a man came to this church. Why are you here? He lost his wife and five children one day. One day. 
He ran to their chief native doctor in this Wayazul. After he had explained what happened to the man, the man said, Huh? The people in charge of what is worrying you. I can't handle them. Do you know that church? Mountain of fire and miracles. Those are the only kind of people who can avenge this thing that has happened. So if you want me to avenge, I cannot do it. And the man said, Excuse me, sir. You are a native doctor. And you are recommending church. You are a small child. You are a child. Better go there. And the man came to me. Ben, I said, Who asked you to come? He said, the chief doctor. And he said, This is the only place they can avenge what has happened. To you. So if you are in a place of power and you are still afraid, then God have mercy on you. Close your eyes now. With a voice that roars like fire and like thunder, you will shout this loud and clear. It's a short but powerful prayer. Tormentors! I am not your candidate! In the name of Jesus! Tormentors, I am not your candidate. I am Yes, 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 yes. Deal with the tormentors. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have been mightily blessed by listening to this message, in case you are watching this telecast and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, I would like to give you that opportunity. Right there where you are, bow down your heads and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that short prayer with me, I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I commit these your children who have surrendered their lives unto your holy hands unto you. Father, uphold them by your power. Lay your hands upon them. Write their names in the book of life. Keep them standing by your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this program. Remember, if the enemy has stolen from you, recovery is by force. God bless you.